I was a city commissioner on the HTC and the planning commission, 14 years on the HTC and seven years on planning. And when a vacancy became open on the city council, I felt I could serve my city with the experience that I had. Two things inspired me to run for office. One, the most important that I feel is the uh, unfortunate reality that 2,000 people, the residents of this community, have to support all of the infrastructure that we have here. Uh, from 2000 until 2010, the population of our community dropped by 500. We're down to about 2,000 souls who now have to support an incredible amount of infrastructure for. Uh, for such a small population. We also have a $10 million new high school that needs new families and new children uh, into the school system to support that uh, entity in our community. The encroachment of commercial uh, ventures into the residential zones is a very serious uh, affront on our fabric of the community. I feel that it uh, eliminates the ability for people to live in our community. Uh, we are a community of artists, musicians, and service sector people, and it requires uh, affordable housing, and uh, with the uh, advent of people buying second homes in our community, it, it reduces the availability even more. So I feel that it's important for who we are as a community, which I also feel is one of the reasons why a lot of people visit us is because of the people who live here. When we lose who we are as a community, I feel we'll lose our identity and we will in that process also lose an attraction that draws people to our community. Uh, I've been uh, at this for over three years now and I'm buoyed by the fact that the Planning Commission is now addressing the idea of eliminating all CUPs and residential zones and I feel that's a very important step forward and I will, if elected, uh, give my all to ensuring that there will no longer be any conversion of residential property into commercial property. 17 years. I've lived in Eureka Springs almost 30 years. Uh, my family goes back almost four generations in the Ozarks. Uh, my grandfather was the postmaster at Marble Falls, some of my earliest uh, thoughts is that uh, some of my earliest images uh, as a child was uh, the water coming out of Bluff Springs, that cool, clear water cascading over those multicolored pieces of flint enthralled me as a child. And I remember watching my grandfather sorting the mail as I sat on a pop crate, uh, uh, drinking in grape head or an RC cola. Uh, Later, uh, in the early 70s, my father retired from 30 years service in the Army to becoming a trout fisherman at Bear Creek Springs, north of Harrison, and I followed him back down to the Ozarks and have stayed here since then for about 46 or 7 years. Um, so basically my family for four generations has been within about a 30 mile radius of this area. Um, my father went on to be awarded every tourism award that the state had to offer. I opened the first DeVito's restaurant at Bear Creek Springs about 32 years ago. Went on to open this restaurant nine months later. I've served five terms on city council. I've sat on the CAPC for seven years. I was the chairman of the Community Development Partnership. I worked on a, uh, the Basin Park Improvement Committee for 15 years. I was part of an initiative to try and bring a track trolley to Eureka Springs where we got as far as the Secretary of Transportation under Bill Clinton. Um, I uh, organized the Taste of Eureka and ran it for nine years and I'm just proud to be a part of the community of Eureka Springs and I will do everything in my capacity to ensure uh, the uh, welfare and uh, of the community in the future. Yes. The HDC for 14 years, Planning Commission 7. I am presently on the board of the Good Shepherd Humane Society and also the Eureka Springs Preservation Society. Yeah, as I stated earlier, I served five terms as a city councilman. I've been on the CAPC for about eight years. I was a four-year restaurant representative, and then the other years I was the representative of the council to the CAPC. Uh, just 
to expand a little bit more, one of the reasons I want to get on the council is to get back on the CAPC because I feel that there's an important issue that is time sensitive to the community and that is what we have been discussing since 1972 and that is the building of a parking garage downtown. I feel that the future of the auditorium and the future of the merchants downtown rests on being able to provide uh, ample convenient parking for our customers. Uh, we now are in, in, in a battle for the tourism dollars in northwest Arkansas. The corridor, especially Bentonville, is adding attraction after attraction after attraction every year. Uh, the area to the north of us, Branson, and now uh, Top of the Rock are building large hotels and developing more attractions. So it's more important that we accommodate people because there is a lot more competition here and we've been discussing this parking facility for almost 50 years now and I think it's high time because of one important factor we're at an historic low for interest rates and the longer we delay addressing this very important issue for our future the more expensive it will become if we don't do something soon the interest rates alone will be beyond our capacity to use CAPC dollars to build a facility and the state allows us under their legislation vis-a-vis -vis CAPC to construct such a facility which will not have any impact on the merchants and the people living here, i.e. through taxation. It will be totally paid for by the CAPC. A knowledge of the city, um, a desire to want to serve the city and to care for the city. Well, I think the most important preparation that's required to serve the community is to know who the community is. Uh, we're an eclectic mix from the far right to the far left and everything in between. We're retirees, we're, we're new people moving into the community, we're people that have been here 30 and 40 years or generation after generation. It's important that uh, we're aware of the needs of our community, uh, particularly in our ward, which brings up how we elect our ward representatives and I feel it does a disservice to the wards that the entire community votes on who each ward will have represent them. For example, if there's a person in Ward 2 who feels that an item is very important to Ward 2 and they are going to champion that cause it's possible that the people in Ward 1 and Ward 3 will ultimately decide who the representative of Ward 2 is. I feel that's an unfair system that oftentimes suppresses the ability of a minority candidate to be able to express their views and to get elected and to have a representative seat on council to see if it's possible for them to fulfill what they determine is the needs and wants of the members of their community. So I feel in, in fairness we need to take a look at how we elect people as our ward representatives because I feel that uh, voting overall does in effect dampen the prospects of a, of, of an, uh, of a minority candidate from, from getting their views and the views that that ward represents to the table. Fourteen years as a HDC commissioner, planning commissioner, one year experience as a city council member, an extensive knowledge of the code books and guideline books of the city. Well, as I stated earlier, I've been in this part of Arkansas for 40 years and my family goes back four generations in Arkansas tourism. Uh, my grandfather uh, started a trout farm at Bluff Springs. Uh, he purchased Mystic Caverns. We had a rock shop at Mystic Caverns. We operated the falls as a picnic area with a trout stream and a stocked trout lake. We also had another gift shop there. We sold all of that to Al Cap and his uh, cronies and they made Dog Patch USA out of that. Uh, my father went on to excel at representing tourism around the state. Um, I've had 31 years as a restaurateur in, in Eureka Springs. Um, I feel that living and working downtown for the last 
27 or more years gives me a feeling for the community, particularly Ward 2, which I represent, which has a disproportionately large merchant uh, community in the ward. Uh, I feel that I understand the needs and wants of, of the merchant community. I understand from having my staff here uh, what they're faced with in finding affordable housing, uh, places to park, uh, uh, the ability uh, to prosper in the community. Uh, I, I feel uh, my experience on too many various community <laughs> civic groups to, to mention. Um, I, I, I stand by what I've done in the community. I'm sure the length of time that I've stayed in the political arena <laughs> causes a few arrows to show, but that's, I'm, a big, I'm a big boy and I understand what politics in a small town <laughs> is all about. We in planning have had things that have come up with lodging. It was explained to me by the city attorney that unless I have a financial stake, then I have no conflict of interest. There has been times on planning when it affected me personally that I have recused myself and I would recuse myself on any issue that came up that I felt that I would be biased in my voting or could have a conflict of interest. Conflicts of interest. Well, let's just start by saying that uh, I grew up in an Army family and the first 20 years of my life were spent around people whose goals were service to their country and community and I feel that's what propels me to, to do what I do and to run for office and be elected as many times as I have and, and to stay in the arena. Um, yeah, somebody made a crack on Facebook yesterday, as a matter of fact, uh, my advocacy over the parking facility uh, across from the New Delhi, and, and that person said, well, you know, that happens to be across from a stairway that leads up to DeVito's restaurant. Well, you know, I've been in business 31 years, I'm, I'm four and a half stars out of five stars, uh, I've been in Bon Appetit, New York Times, Gourmet Magazine. If people that know me think I do what I do because of something that's in it for me, then I guess they're not paying attention, but I can assure you that any potential possible conflict of interest I will recuse myself from. Um, I, I stand behind my record. I have no trepidations about any votes or any positions that I've taken in the past, and I can assure the people of the community that I just do this out of service to community. It's just something that's been ingrained in the fiber of my being. And it is how I had addressed myself in this 68 years that I've been on the planet and will continue to do that. Number one, first, the past council, me not included, got the city out of debt, and that is one of the big things that I want to be financially responsible. Of course, our infrastructure is the main thing that I want to focus on, and that goes hand in hand with the Americans Disability Act, because we will be able to bring that up to compliance along with our infrastructure. I also want to be in the forefront of a, the newest kind of tourism that we have, and it's called ecotourism. Well, I think one thing I personally would like to see happen is, is more people to participate in, in city government. Um, I know when I ran in 2016, I was the only person in city government that was on the ballot that year. Uh, that might have had some, something to do with uh, not getting the seat that year. I, uh, I understand a lot about uh, what precipitates people to vote in the community. but. Uh, I'm, I'm still concerned even with the few people that have decided to step up and participate in, in city government uh, this year um, and I applaud them for doing that. I, I feel that more and more people need, need to step forward. It, 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 it's not a really difficult uh, thing to sit at the council table. 
uh, takes a little common sense and a little bit of knowledge about uh, where we are as a community. And uh, I feel that's the participation in, in government is very important. Um, infrastructure always comes up, uh, and that's just something you just can't overlook in our community. Uh, you know, once upon a time, Eureka Springs was the second largest city in Arkansas, and, and a lot of the infrastructure was laid down then. Um, a lot of it's aging. Uh, I wish we could uh, clear up all the springs. I don't see that as an attainable goal uh, for uh, the near future. Uh, third issue uh, would be uh, trying to enhance the merchant community because they are threatened by lack of parking and the in internet is also making brick and mortar stores uh, on the endangered species list and if we lose our unique shopping experience, we lose the number two reason why people go on vacation is, is to shop. And these are my friends and neighbors and, and it hurts every year when one or two of them goes out of business because I know part of the reason why is not enough parking. Of course, again, the infrastructure, the American Disability Act, and again, back to the finances. I want to keep us out of debt and moving along. Well, number one, as I said before, is the, the loss of population in Eureka Springs. Uh, we, we can't continue on this way. Uh, I, I don't get out of the restaurant much, unfortunately, but in my small circle of people that I know, I know five people that have bought second homes in the community, and that's not something we can track. We don't know how many people are buying second homes in our community, and those are people who don't consider this our primary, their primary residence, who, who spend the overwhelming majority of their money in, in their city of their primary residence. So I feel for a variety of reasons that the encroachment of, 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 of commercial into residential is, is the primary thing we need to stop right away. The other thing, going back to the parking garage, and that's time sensitive, it's very time sensitive that, that if we don't address that uh, soon, that interest rates will make it beyond our reach. Uh, and the third subject is going back to infrastructure again. Uh, council has to understand that you can't keep taxing uh, the same 2,000 people to uh, accommodate our infrastructure when the overwhelming majority of the impact on our infrastructure is tourism related. I feel that in, instead of uh, uh, going to the population and uh, getting more money, i.e. taxation or water rates or sewer rates, uh, that if, if and, I, and I hope that we're not in that situation again to need sums of money like that, that uh, rather than putting it up to a vote of the people, which they turned down the tourists paying that tax and now they're stuck with that, that water rate. The council examined it from, from different aspects instead of constantly looking toward the resident population as their revenue source. Um, absolutely. I think it's an absolutely wonderful thing. About a year and a half ago, planning addressed the zoning and where a dispensary would be allowed in our um, commercial areas. And planning's job is to make recommendations to the city council. So when planning, or it's in the early stages, I guess, of the dispensary, it will go to planning for the zoning and then planning will give it to the city council and I, if I am elected as a councilman, will be addressing it. Uh, yes, I support medical marijuana uh, without a doubt. I was actively involved in the issue in the early days. Uh, I was in favor of issue seven uh, and, and worked hard to uh, solicit uh, signatures for that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, amendment five, I think, or the one that we're going to uh, be functioning under, under past. Uh, so I, I support that and quite frankly, I'm, I'm glad that it did have an amendment to the Constitution attached to it because, quite frankly, I think our legislature would have done away with it uh, without having uh, that constitutional am amendment in there. Uh, council, uh, I always feel that a hands-off approach by council when it comes to business is, is a good philosophy to have, uh, only in, in times when 
you realize there's a problem related to a business activity is when councils should step in. Um, I think this is a business like any other business, which has been embraced by states around the union, and every day, uh, especially Oklahoma, has uh, passed it. So um, we stand to lose business to surrounding states that are enacting this legislation, so it would be to our detriment not to support that in our community. Um, and I think probably the only thing that council might have uh, cause to be involved in would be uh, zoning as to where these types of businesses could locate. That to me is probably the only place that council could be involved in this. Absolutely. Well, uh, I've always supported civil rights since 1968 when I first took to the streets to support civil rights. Then against the war in Vietnam in the early 70s, in 85 I organized the first protest against the Klan in Arkansas in 1986. I organized a protest here in Eureka Springs before I even lived here against white supremacists. Um, LGB community, you know, I see no distinction, people, you know, that's who we are. Um, I was the person who introduced 2223 to council one night when it wasn't on the agenda and managed to prevail to get council to put it on the agenda and then managed to shepherd it through council through three readings and an emergency <laughs> amendment that night uh, prior to the state enacting their legislation which ultimately would prohibit us having the ability to defend our citizens in our own city and by the way that legislation is presently before the Arkansas Supreme Court and I think opening arguments are coming up pretty quick so I've got my fingers crossed that justice will prevail and that cities will have the ability to defend their population because we're all the same. Uh, no, I have not read the city code book cover to cover. What I have read and, and I have extensive knowledge of is the planning code book, which goes hand in hand with the city code book. I know exactly how to navigate the city code book so if there is something that comes up that I need to address it's very easy for me to go in and find what I need. Um, so anything need to be revised? A lot of our laws planning we've been working on them the last few years are codes and laws that what was applicable 20 years ago have changed in technology and so we're bringing them up to code we're changing things and again planning makes the recommendations and the city council makes the changes or the new ordinances that support the laws. Um, I feel that our codes are enforced as well as they are on the books. I, I do get, that's one of the most common questions that I get, is code enforcement? Well, I usually don't have any trouble falling asleep at night, so I really have found no reason to read the code book cover to cover. Uh, it's a reference matter material that is uh, something I go to quite frequently when I need a question answered or to find out what city ordinances are already in place. Um, over the course of five terms on city council and just my daily concern over how the city runs and how it operates even when I'm not on council, I spend time going through the city code, but I can say that no, I have not read it cover to cover and really have no intention of doing that. Um, I think enforcement is probably more of an issue that needs to be addressed by council than anything else uh, off the top of my head. I don't know of any ordinances that we don't have in place, but I do feel that enforcement is a major factor. I'm quite concerned with the sidewalk issue in the community. 
Um, I hate to say how many times I see the ambulance come downtown for a slip and fall uh, when when this when it's wet or uh, extremely humid and dew forms on what appears to be stone uh, that becomes as slippery as glass in some places. So uh, we have a responsibility to get the property owners to follow through with our city ordinances and repair and maintain their sidewalks because it is a safety issue and we need to enforce the regulations that we put in place as a community and then follow those regulations. I see Eureka Springs going forward. There's an old adage, you must change to stay the same. And we are changing. We've, we're embracing what is known as ecotourism. And we're having people of all ages that are hiking, biking, using our trails, and discovering this area. So I see the city has embraced that with the new trails that have been put in. I also see us coming up to ADA compliance. We have a strong number of people buying and moving here. Um, the mayor's task force has an unbelievable economic development um, committee that is exploring and has vast interest in small industries coming here. So I see Eureka Springs going forward in the most positive, perfect way. Where do I see Eureka Springs in five years? Well, I've watched a lot of things change. And the 45 years that I've been here. I've watched Branson grow from where you could go from the lakefront and see Sammy Lane pirate cruises all the way to Marvel Cave, which became Silver Dollar City. And the only thing you passed was Presley's Mountain Music and uh, Old Matt's Cabin. Uh, I've seen the corridor develop from four sleepy towns to a metropolitan uh, area that's now recognized in the top 10 in this country. I feel that things have changed radically in this community since the bus tour business has declined. I am buoyed by the fact that we are no longer an adjunct to Branson, which was why the mid-80s to the mid-90s was such a great time in Eureka Springs, and that we are now coming into a community who we really are, and that's an arts destination. Uh, we have incredible outdoor activities with the Buffalo River, the White River, the Chain of Lakes, and now we have uh, world-class mountain biking facilities in our area, which are growing by leaps and bounds. I monitor the parking lot behind the restaurant, and I see more and more cars coming with uh, bikes on them. I'm seeing hipsters on the street. I'm encouraged that there are young people on the streets. Uh, I think probably our best years are ahead of us as a community. Uh, I think we've got a number of things in place. We'll ensure our position as a tourist destination for the future, but we can't uh, fall asleep. We have to keep our guard up. We have to stay new and fresh. Uh, we have to think of new ideas on how to put the word out to the rest of the world on who we are and so that they will beat a path to our doors. Okay, I would like you to vote for me from, from my extensive knowledge of the city, my absolute care for the city, my ability to work with people, my respect and consideration of everybody, and my joy of living here. Um, I think if people uh, agree with what I've had to say, or if people uh, know me and know what I've done over the last 30 some years in the community and feel that I'm still somebody that represents uh, what they believe in in Eureka Springs and feel that um, I have some ideas for the future or, or that uh, I will represent them honestly and truthfully, uh, then yes, I, I ask for your vote. Uh, if you don't feel you know enough about me, I'm more than welcome to spend time with you and answer any questions you have. Uh, you can uh, reach me on my Facebook page, uh, James DeVito. Um, you can uh, email me at pasta8, that's P-A-S-T-A-A-T-E at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions 
uh, because I, I, I would ultimately represent you and quite frankly it's not about me it's about all of us uh, because uh, no one person can do it by themselves and uh, like that old saying goes about it takes a village uh, well we're, we're about that size and uh, you know if we all pull together in the same direction there's nothing we can't accomplish